Welcome to Expedition Scenist. Join us this week as we stop in at Compass Key in the Exumas chain of islands. Michael shares some fishing tips, and we also explore Wardrick Wells National Park, where we have one of the worst nights on the trip so far. Poor planning or bad luck? You be the judge. We arrived at Compass Key and realized quickly that we weren't interested in staying at the marina. Instead, we decided to anchor up in a shallow pass near the marina. Do you remember that TV show, The Lives of the Rich and Famous? Well, um, I think we found out where they're all hiding. Compass Key. This is High Lifestyles, your VIP journey in for the lives and loves of today's lucky winners who hit the jackpot in life. Due to the tide and the time of day, we headed back out of the marina and did some exploring with the tender in the surrounding estuaries. Thank goodness we are not living the life of the rich and famous, but we are trying to live our lives honestly and relatively simply. And by the sounds of my commentary, it would seem as though I have watched a great deal of television, but experiences such as these do seem to awaken in me memories from television, movies, and even books with tales of mystery, travel, and adventure. And that is why we love it. What is interesting is the actual marina, at the marina dock, they are feeding, hand feeding the bonefish and the nurse sharks, and they're all around the big dock. So we got off to take a look and we were told it's $15 a person, because it's private property, if we wanted to walk on the dock and take a look at the sharks, and we said no thanks. So, we did see some sizable bonefish there, but um, we're going to look some more on our own here. Oh my gosh. You know what this reminds me of? What? This reminds me of Walker K Chronicles. Oh yeah. That yeah. show that chasing, the bonefishing, uh, bone uh, show that you used to watch. Yeah, with and, Flip Pallet. Dream, with Flip yeah. Pallet, and you used to dream about being in places like this. Yeah. And here you are. Yeah, it's true. You know, whether we're catching bonefish or not, it's just so beautiful. It really is, it's amazing. Looking. Living one of your dreams. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's our anchor, is sitting beside us. So the tide is just coming around. There's not enough tide to even straighten out the chain, and that's what's holding us beside the anchor. And it's that shallow in here. It's actually shallow enough. I should be careful. I don't. The bottom of the boat doesn't hit the uh, top of the anchor. But the tide's coming up, so that's not going to be an issue. It's a, it's a gorgeous morning. Yeah, cleaned a fish, and we put out a little treat for the for the local wildlife because these guys are used to being fed at Compass Key. So Michael's going to go make friends with them. He nibbles and then he goes away, right? Yeah, it's actually perfect looking here. So, so here's what's great about owning an outboard is you can trim up the motor and you're drawing a lot less water. Like we are anchored, I don't know what's the depth here. It's like we have maybe three feet underneath their keel and we don't have to worry about the propeller and the skeg getting caught because we just trimmed the, we trimmed the entire thing up. So look at this. 
See the motor is trimmed out. How the water. And we can just sit here. And this, we can walk to the beach if we wanted to. You know, or we can sit here and, and, and video a, uh, a ray. I don't know where he went. But, uh... Oh, he's a right over there. After leaving Compass Key, we decided to try our luck fishing on the ocean side. It didn't take long for Michael's lucky lure to land us a wonderful catch. The other one in, Jewel. Are you filming? Oh! Oh, I lost him, I think. I lost him. Oh! Alright, put it in gear again. Head shaking. I think we're too deep to get a cuda. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm gonna go over here. This swim platform is really handy, you know, because I don't want to get caught up in the dinghy. And I don't want to get it caught up in the he's staying down. It's got some, I can't see any color yet. Yeah. So what we do, yeah we do, what we're trying to do is Julia's just got it in gear. That way there it prevents it from getting wrapped around something. And it's just in gear, it's just idling and forward. <laughs> it's not coming up. I think so. It's, oh, it's a tuna. Yeah, get me oh the... Oh my gosh. Alright, so it's not a very big black fin. But it's... It's not bad either. Oh, it's, it's hard to see from here. here. Nice black fin. Alright, I'm going to check to see on book first. The reason I'm checking to see how I'm hooked because my friend, he's gonna, the hook's gonna pull out. Actually, you know what? Give me the gaff. He's gonna. I'm gonna lose this one. Do I hold the um, rod? No, I think I can do them both. See, if I try lifting him out on his weight, first thing I'm doing is I'm trying to see how well it's hooked. And it's there. Oh my goodness! Nice. Can you lift that. Well up? done. Sushi, Sushi for dinner! Pulling hard. Two fish on at the same time. This is crazy. It started out as a quiet morning. It turned into... Oh! Mine's fighting like crazy. <laughs> Is it? it is. I feel like mine's fighting more than yours. Maybe it's because I have spaghetti arms. Oh, I think that's something shiny. I think that's another. I got a tuna. Oh my god. I got a tuna. She's here. She's swimming circles. I got something really big on here. Uh, just leave her, just let her fight. Okay. It's another tuna. Oh my gosh. What lucky here, you, day. Here, you take this one. Cut that one in the rod holder. Okay. This one looks really big. Oh no, it's not. It's the same thing. It's not mine with... Oh no! What? Oh no! Did a shark just get yeah, that? Yeah, shark got it off. Oh my god! Oh, you know what it was? No, it could have had it. Where is it? Right there. You want the gas? No, I, I'm going to try to just... Bring this one in. I want to get it in before the cuda gets it. Oh man, that was such a beautiful tuna. Here's that tail. I know, it's a, it's a lot bigger than yours. Oh my goodness. Dargun, and I saw something big on it. And I'm like, oh, it's twice the size because. Oh my god. Look at this, is what we have left over. Yeah. Oh. See that? Now you can tell. Oh. That's all that's left He's for me. Sushi for dinner too. Yeah, well, we're gonna take this. I'm gonna take this little piece right here. Don't waste it. Yeah. You want the knife? Yeah, please. 
So I was, I was reeling it. Okay, what's I was, the It's oh, sitting it's in the bucket. bucket. Yeah. So I was reeling it in. I'm shaking. You're like cucumber. I was re <laughs> I was reeling it in. And I go, it's a huge fish because it was like four feet long. Oh, that was the cuda. It was a big cuda that I that we had on there. Um, just drop it on the deck now there we go our poor little dude is gone our poor little dude oh, oh well I guess it's a circle of life circle of life Everyone yeah gets what it no kidding all right, so get that one. Do you want your ray? Must be a lot of tuna in this area. Let's leave that just the way it is. Do you, honey, do you want to wash your hands if you have salt water on it and just grab a whole steering wheel and go again? Sure. Oh, that's a nice thing. So show us what you got. Beautiful black fin. Oh, nice. Yeah. That is So beautiful. what this is, is it's just a, you know, I think it's got like 80 pound. It comes with about four feet of 80 pound uh, floral. Most of these lures come like that, coiled up. And you just hook them onto a swivel. You see this? So you just take that, you hook it onto a swivel. And the swivel here, make sure it's a good quality swivel. Don't buy cheap ones because you want this to spin so it doesn't twist your lineup. I'm using, I'm using, this is braid in here. Um, but you can use mono. I'm using, I like the, uh, the colored mono because I can see if my lines are crossing and I can see if one gets tight, mm. I know that there's, um, I know that there might be weeds on it or something like that. Um, you know, I, you'll know when you have a fish on cause your rods doubled over. But, uh, as far as when you get some, you know, some, some grass or something on it, your line will get a little bit tighter. And it's easier to see that when you've got some, you know, high, some of this fluorescent see this one right here see this how, how brightly colored that is so that's really easy to see um, so as and as far as rods and reels go I mean I just use what I have I mean the level winds I'm having trouble with this this one here this this particular rod here reel I mean it's just it's already seizing up because of salt water this, that's so I wouldn't consider this a good reel. I'd, I'd spend more money on a reel than those. This, I think this is a Shimano TLD. Not too happy with that. But whereas this is just a spinning reel and I haven't had any trouble with these things. They've been doing really well. So I only have the one with braid because that's what I had on it. I was using it for sharks back in the Everglades. So I have braid on that. And, uh, and then the other two lines have the orange um, uh, monofilament on it. So you've got um, braided line is your yeah. fishing line, yeah. and then you've got a leader, which is what you were talking about, 80 pound test? Yeah, it looks like it's about 80. Yeah, it looks about 80 pound floral. I mean, not floral, I, it looks like it's just mono. They didn't have floral back in the day when I bought this. And I don't think you, I don't think they're even sold with that. They're just used with And look eight. at the size of that hook. Wow. Yeah, it's a big hook, but it has to have that bite. It has to have this gap here. See, that's the important part is this gap. Hold it down by your t-shirt, because it's white okay. there. See that gap? That's important that you have at least this gap. So look at that. It's about the same size as my index finger. You get anything too small and you get less of the fish hooked on. Oh. And then you have more of a chance. And when you're reeling that fish and you saw that, whereas I'm reeling the fish and I'm looking to see where that hook is sitting in that fish. Oh, okay. So if that fish was big enough, I could have swung him into the boat and into the pail. But because I could see that the hole had already torn a little bit bigger in, in, in right uh, on, its, on its edge of its lip, that if I tried to pick this fish up, I'd probably lose him. That's oh. why I put a gaff in it. I prefer not to gaff them because I just put a ga I just put the hook, the hole right through the flesh that I want to eat. So um, oh, this okay. is uh, the reason why uh, you know. But I always have a gaff, and you don't need a big gaff. You know, you just need something. You just need something that uh, will do the job. Again, this is plenty big. I mean, I mean, I work for. I worked for a, a lot of captains over the years from the Florida Keys up along the west coast of Florida. And this gap here, it's, it's, some people would say that's a little small, but it really isn't, depending on where you hook them. 
you know, once you put this, you should try to put it in the forward part of him because then you can steer the fish. If you put it in the back, that fish can still steer himself. So you want to put it over its back and stick it in it. And you're better off using one hand when you gaff because it's like when you point or when you use a spear pull, it's, you're, more, you're more accurate with one hand. Once you get that gaff in the spot, then you can pull. But when you do it with two hands, all of a sudden, it's not right. It's the accuracy is not as good. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of how I do that. And, uh, and I've, I've gaffed thousands of fish in my life. So uh, it gives you an idea of, um, of what I do. do. It, yeah. And I don't know if it's the right way, but it's the way I've always done it. <laughs> that's it. Great. Our experience at Wardrick Wells was mixed. We arrived on a beautiful day, pulling into the headquarters just after a rain squall. So we just learned that you need to call in on channel nine to book before you get here. And uh, then you can pick up a mooring ball in the main uh, bay. But first come, first serve is in Emerald Bay, which is where we're heading. So um, we didn't do our homework, bad on us, but there's still mooring balls available, so that's good. So we're going to head out and around to the Emerald Bay moorings and um, pick up a ball there. So the office, when you come to the beach, go take the pathway, little pathway to the right, and it takes you up to the office where you have to go and pay for staying here. The park was established in 1959 by the Bahamian government. You must be self-sufficient in the park. There are no supplies of any kind, including water. Be sure to contact the park when in radio range to get your mooring assignment. Radio channel 9 at 9 a.m. to request a mooring either that day or 24 hours in advance. What a beautiful spot though. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. Especially when the conditions are like this. Yes. Wardrick Wells is the headquarters of the Exumas Land and Sea Park, a Bahamas National Park. It has a blend of underwater coral gardens, colorful and some very large reef fish, as well as ruins from a loyalist settlement dating back to the 1700s. You can go hiking on rocky bluffs and discover some cool historical pirates' lairs on the island. Legend has it that the island is haunted by resident ghosts of three different shipwrecks. One was full of missionaries heading to the southern Bahamas. Okay, reverse. Okay, that's good. So what makes it easy about this is that you can just undo this one and just let it slide out. Oh, I see. If you're in an emergency, for some reason you have to let go of this mooring ball quickly. Yes. It's just one cleat and it just slides right out of there. You don't tie anything to that. Oh, to the actual mooring ball? You don't tie anything to this clevis here. Yeah, to this, to this clue. Ah, uh, I see. I believe that's called a clue. So you, you, uh, you go through. And I know a clue's on a sail, but that's what I call it. But anyways, it goes through there. Maybe it's called a thimble. 
I don't know, but it's, it goes through and around and then you clean it down and all you have to do is undo the one end and let it go. Right. So we didn't get the spot we wanted, yeah. which is too bad, but you know, <clears throat> we apparently you have to book these ahead of time and everything else is first come first serve. So it's like, whatever, you know, well. So we have it for next time that you have to hail them, you have to email them or hail them on a yeah. channel from a distance and book it. But it sounds like she was already pre-booked a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which and is then she fun. has some larger vessels that she are on hold. Yeah. Well, so. where we were, you couldn't even put a larger vessel in there. No, but, really um, couldn't. But we're not expecting anything. I think we're, I think that is south right there. So we're supposed to get southerly winds tomorrow, easterly winds tonight. <coughs> east this way so and west we're getting westerly winds right now so, so we're getting all over the place we've got some protection around us yeah, hopefully that's that. enough i think i think you usually make a good call when it comes to these things so i trust you Bling. okay this this is uh blackfin tuna and i've just cleaned it and i've cut all the uh the bloodline out of it and i've just taken it down to its finest pieces that blackfin tuna is excellent as sashimi or sushi because the balance of fat in it is excellent and the taste is excellent. The whole trick is you don't put too much soy sauce on it or you destroy the flavor of, you just get the flavor of the soy sauce. But the soy sauce that I do prefer is ikikamen. That is good stuff. <laughs> it is my favorite soy sauce and it does work well. And I think most, most uh, um, uh, sushi restaurants use this. Uh, anyways, the good ones do. And uh, so the whole trick is don't put too much on, and then it's good. And cut it thin, and be a pig. <laughs> Enjoy the fruits of your labor, mm -hmm. and uh, and the grace of God that let yeah. you catch that little fish. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Bless this fish. Mm -hmm. Well, people, I have graduated. I am on a hike by myself. I am going up um, Rendezvous Hill, Rendezvous Trail, and there's trail markers, red, red splotches, um, all along the way, so it's really easy to follow the trail, <laughs> she says. And then, oh, there's an arrow. I was going the wrong way. There's an arrow. So Michael wanted to stay at the boat and rest, and I really wanted to go for a hike to the top of this lookout. So for the first time, I drove the tender by myself and landed it on the beach, keeping in mind where the tide was gonna be when I got back and uh, making it up the hill to get an amazing view, I think, of the, um, of the anchorage. So I guess I'm walking on on this um, coral which the island is built on and there are holes let's see how far down that one goes mm, not too far but you wouldn't want to step on that break your leg hazards I should probably just not talk and film just walk This marks the top of the peak, and over there is Sea Nest. Hard to see right there, I think. And uh, what an awesome view. Over there is the park office, and the ocean. my favorite food, my favorite dinner. We've got fresh blackfin tuna. Grilled on the barbecue to perfection. Thank you, Michael. Mmm. Perfect. I got a knife. Oh, thanks. You know, we were just going to eat just strictly the blackfin tonight because we were tired. We've done some, we did some really cool free diving today, or snorkeling really is what we did. I, did we even put the weights on? No, it was just snorkeling. Yeah, so it was just snorkeling. And uh, and we saw some huge grouper. I mean, we're in a, we're in a land, we're in the- uh, Land and Sea Park. Land and Sea Park here in the Bahamas. And uh, 
and so there's no spear fishing, there's no fishing at all. So we saw these huge, huge uh, grouper. I saw a black grouper that was almost the size of me. It was probably 80 pounds, maybe 90 pounds, close to 100 pounds. This thing was huge. And then we saw a lot of Nassau grouper. And you know, that's kind of unusual seeing because, because of the fishing that happens around here. But uh, you know, we've had a fantastic day though. This morning we caught the black fin. Mm -hmm. and, Which uh, we're eating for dinner tonight. Yes, that's right. And we caught those outside the land and sea park because we're not allowed to fish inside the actual park boundaries. Yeah, so coming up too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but what a great day. Which you probably will see on this video as well. What's that? Because I filmed, I filmed you reeling them in. Oh. Yeah, Earlier that's right. Yes. Look at that. So, uh, bon appetit. Oh good. my gosh, you grilled it perfectly. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's like a steak. It's really good. Mm. It's better than a steak. It's so delicate. It really is. It's amazing. Amazing. So this little video is just to try to give you some idea of what it's like. And I am, I'm not moving it. The boat's moving. The boat's moving me. And this is what happens when you don't make reservations at Waterick Wells Park and they put you by the Emerald Key and you have a southern wind. There's, like any mooring, like any anchorage, if you don't have protection, you will have a rocky night. So uh, we are prepared now to not sleep much tonight. Um, it's, it's hard to show you how much this boat is moving from side to side. We're quiet for a minute and then we just start rocking and rolling back and forth so it's going to be a rough night. And the hull slap is, is crazy. So watch a movie and we'll check back in the morning to let you know how much sleep we got. to the southwest. It was exposed from the south to the west. And, and we had a southwest today, so we were hammered all night long. And we actually have tonight there at Wardrick Wells, but we decided just to, we paid for it. It's just like, I didn't want to have to deal with another night like that. And it's supposed to lay down, but we're gonna have this all day before it lays down tonight. So we said, ah, we might as well head, head farther north. There's, um, that Hawksville. We're heading up to Hawksville and trying to find a place to hide away from this. You know, that's. Oh, this looks skinny here. Yeah. Even it's a rising tide. Yeah, well, let's. I don't want to get stuck. No kidding. Just looking at your little fan that's saving your life right here. Yeah. Plugged in by a USB cable. We'll put that in the uh, description. Alright. Well, in the end, tired as we were, we still enjoyed the area. Part of our planning ahead issues stem from needing a flexible plan to suit changes in the weather as well as our own likes and dislikes for an anchorage. We have a lot to learn and, God willing, years ahead to keep exploring. Thanks for watching. 
And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. You know we love hearing from you. And if you are new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. Stay safe out there. Don't forget.